From high school friends to modern mystics, join Nicholas Texier and Andy Pedge as they let go of the past and enter the vast. Over to you, Andy and Nicholas. <laughs> because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. to realize that you literally are your brother. Uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, Modern Mystics. This, uh, I'm the co-host of the show along with my dear friend, Andy. Oh, I never tire of that intro video. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Well, yeah, the theme of our show today, just as Andy and I were connecting this week, felt like it could be on the theme of purpose. And, and when Andy and I were talking about it, it just felt like really alive and it felt like, wow, this is really something I feel like I want to teach so I can learn because I felt something earlier this week where, at the beginning of this week, where I just, I felt like I was in this total, total amnesia. I was like, Wait, what is this all about? What am I doing this for? Like, I just, I, I felt like I couldn't remember. I couldn't seem to get in touch. It just, like something just covered over my mind. And, and so when I, when I was sharing all this with this kind of healing I had that day around this theme with Andy, it just felt really inspiring. Like, oh yeah, I really feel like I want to hear what the spirit has to say about it. So I would love for the spirit to kind of speak through me so that I can hear what it is I need to. And yeah, so just felt like a very good topic and it felt like a so-called hot topic, um, even with uh, the generation we call millennials, I guess which I would be included in. And I just remember kind of years, years ago, uh, before I'd found the course or really any sort of spirituality, I entered in before I had the context for it, a bit of a dark night of the soul experience where there's just this kind of intense sense of depression and despair and not really knowing how to step out of it. And just as Andy and I were connecting this week, I, I was reminded of this and that I think one of actually the terrifying thoughts that came to my mind was, it's like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know like, what any of this is for. I was 18 and I just, it felt like a very scary thought. I was about to head into college and it just, it felt very, um, I don't know, like doom. <laughs> like I have this whole seeming life ahead of me and it seems pointless. You know, like, oh, get a job, make some money, get married. Okay, but what for? what does it do you know I, was, I think i was starting to get the hint before i had a context that in and of itself marriage money success all the things that we normally value just are empty you know they don't actually give anything in and of themselves and really it just becomes purpose is the only choice <laughs> so i just want to pull that out because that title kept and even that uh that sentence just kept coming to my mind this week. Like, yeah, the only choice you can make is purpose. I mean, it's really what you give to anything, like in any moment that matters. It doesn't really matter what you're doing it for because the spirit can retranslate anything. And by giving your mind over to the spirit or Jesus or God, whatever term you want to use, uh, I mean, that that kind of makes makes it for you in your mind that gives you the joy that's where you'll start to experience the love and the peace by the purpose you give everything like doing this show in and of itself is it's, it's empty you know if it weren't for the purpose of that we give to it that where we want to teach what we would learn or that 
uh, to heal our mind of any blocks we have of communicating and connecting with all our brothers and sisters, all our friends, it, it would have no purpose. It's like, it would be for nothing. It's only in giving it this purpose that I've just stated that it has any meaning, that it has a direction that's helpful for, for the mind. You know? So it just felt really powerful for me. <laughs> And yeah, just as, just as we were praying about it, Andy and I both came across it, although <laughs> I wasn't surprised because we both went to one of our websites we have here, uh, which is called a course in miracles And <laughs> I was just like, Oh, what did you type in purpose? I was like, Oh, so did I. <laughs> and so we both came across the very first uh, thing that came up in that search, which was uh, chapter 30 in A Course in Miracles, section five called The Only Purpose. <laughs> and there's, there's some different bits in here that I really like, but I just felt to kind of read two parts and just kind of see where it goes from there. The real world is a state in which <clears throat> the mind has learned how easily do idols go when they are still perceived but wanted not. How willingly the mind can let them go when it has understood that idols are nothing and nowhere and are purposeless. For only then can guilt and sin be seen without a purpose and as meaningless. Thus is the real world's purpose gently brought into awareness to replace the goal of sin and guilt. And all that stood between your image of yourself and what you are, forgiveness washes joyfully away. And then, a little later on it says, do not look back except in honesty. And when an idol tempts you, think of this. There never was a time an idol brought you anything except the, quote, gift of guilt. Not one was bought except at cost of pain, nor was it ever paid by you alone. Be merciful unto your brother then, and do not choose an idol thoughtlessly remembering that he will pay the cost as well as you, for he will be delayed when you look back and you will not perceive whose loving hand you hold. Look forward, then. In confidence, walk with a happy heart that beats in hope and does not pound in fear. Yeah, so I just love that because I can just see where so often, if I'm really honest in the moment, there's, there's kind of an acting or there's a reacting out of fear. I want to do this because I want to avoid consequence. You know, why is it we automatically get into a job or go to school or anything like that? Like when I was looking back at it while connecting with Andy, I was thinking, hmm, what was kind of, at least initially, the purpose of going to college for me? Well, uh, <laughs> I can't really say there was a very good one or anything like that, because when I looked back on it, it seemed like the two subjects in school I seemed to be good at in high school was chemistry and biology. So I thought, well, I have to go to college. I have to get a job. You know, I have to do something. And I seem to be good at this, so why not study biochemistry? wasn't really interested in it. You know, I wasn't really inspired by it, but I was like, I seem to be good at these two things. I could probably get by. <laughs> and yet, you know, that, you know, that's not supporting the happiness. And yet I didn't have a context for them. And I think that's why it's so helpful to see like, yeah, as long as we put the purpose out front, that it's, you know, for a life of happiness, for a life of forgiveness, 
uh, a life of washing away these beliefs and guilt and moving away from an idol, which I think Jesus defines in the miracles is an idol is more of anything. It does not matter what, you know, it's from this belief in lack. So it just felt really powerful, just becoming aware that of all the things I've done that were from either no seeming purpose or a purpose of fear, purpose of I'm not going to be cared for, that I have to act out of fear because nothing's going to you know, take care of me. Um, and that we don't have to live that way, that there is another way that putting a trust in this higher power or Jesus or whatever you want to call it is the way out being willing to just be honest in the moment and have this question of, you know, what would you have me do right now? Not in five years, not next week, not that it's like right now, what would you have me do? What would you have me say? It's like this, the guidance step by step. We don't have to figure it all out. That's where the mind gets into this whole thing of doubt, of thinking it needs to figure, yeah, figure it all out, know ahead of time. And yet that's, that's at least not been my experience, that it's really step by step each day. The Spirit gently guides us along. You know, speak with this person or give this person a hug or... You know, maybe share this post on Facebook. We'll keep it pretty modern. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just so gentle and it's so step by step. And that's really the way out. That's forgiveness, I feel like. Really, there's this washing of the mind, just like I spoke about in that section of guilt and sin and all these false concepts and beliefs. As you follow this the spirit within, the voice of love within, it just washes your mind of this personal perspective of fear, which normally we're listening to and acting from, and so therefore reinforcing it. And we're not guilty for any of that, but we aren't getting any happier that way. So, over to you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, it's like... Um... I remember I was having a walk with a friend back in high school and I just told him like I realized I, I was thinking about like what was the point of everything that we were doing like like why was I even in school um, learning things to go get a job or and then make money and then have a family or like what was the point of everyone's life in the world and then I kind of came to this conclusion that it was the whole purpose of like everyone's life in the world had to be for fun, you know, like for happiness. So it was like, it couldn't be anything else. I just couldn't think of anything else. So that kind of just like, okay, kind of like shocked me. But then it's like coming to this realization that, okay, so if the purpose of the world or of life is supposed to be for happiness, then why aren't I happy? You know, it's like, isn't that kind of interesting? It's like, maybe I don't know the means to happiness. Like maybe nothing I've tried, nothing I did ever actually got me there. So even though the purpose is supposed to be happiness, it's like it hasn't worked so far. So, you know, maybe there must be another way. And then I, I know most of us came to that. I think actually all of us came to that. There must be another way. And then maybe we found the course or, because we realized whatever we were doing wasn't working. So it's like, it's like, yeah, even having that purpose of happiness, it's like, well, I still don't know even what happiness is. I don't know how to get there. So it's like, okay, please help. There must be another way. And then, yeah, the course comes in and then we get in touch with our internal teacher. And then through experience, we see that the internal teacher is leading us to what's truly happiness and that our own ways wouldn't work because there seems to be the split mind so there seems to be like my way <laughs> or and the, the, the ego would say there's a split mind and it's my way or the highway but really it's like my way the ego or the holy spirit's way which is going to lead to true happiness so i remember um yeah 
even all throughout high school, I didn't really care about anything I was really studying. And I didn't know what I was even going to do after I graduated. And then I just went to the university in the same state because I was like, well, a lot of other people are going there, whatever. You know, I had no real direction. And then I, I ended up going there. And then in my first year of college, um, a friend phoned me up and he said, hey, I have this like business opportunity. And then he started like, you know, kind of like pitching me. And he was telling me about all these, this, he was telling me about basically it was a multi-level marketing thing. And he was telling me how, yeah, this is it. Like, this is our freedom. Uh, you can do whatever you want, whatever, whatever. And I had never heard those ideas in my mind that I could like work for myself and have um, freedom, so to speak. So that was like a little stepping stone to kind of expand my mind out of, you have to get a degree, you have to get a job, um, work 40 hours a week or however many hours people work in jobs and then, and all that kind of stuff that kind of got broken. So it was a helpful stepping stone. So I got like really excited. I was like, this is it, this is freedom, whatever, whatever. And then I, I fully dove into that. And eventually I kind of realized this isn't it. <laughs> you know, it's like, it wasn't working out, but even more importantly, the Holy Spirit was telling me like, this isn't it, you know, this isn't going to get you to that real state of mind that you're looking for. And cause I was studying the course at that time and I seemed to get so excited about the business that I put the course away. So it's like, it's kind of an obvious sign when like, uh, you know, when you're starting to not listen to your internal teacher, it's like, okay, I think I'm going off in the wrong direction. Maybe whatever I was doing was helpful in the beginning, like as a stepping stone to expand my mind, but maybe the Holy Spirit wants me to turn in another direction now. So yeah, you always want to stay tuned to the internal teacher. And so basically that business didn't work out. And, um, and then, so I hopped to another one. I went to real estate investing. And after a period of like, kind of like this despair and hopelessness, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? And I thought I was going to try going back to community college, but I ended up skipping class every day and reading this uh, book about real estate investing that my dad had given me. Um, Cause I still had some kind of like ambitions for that so-called freedom and happiness and abundance that I thought was going to come through like working for myself and becoming a millionaire and whatever. So. So yeah, I eventually, I went to the end of that book and the author of the book said he, um, he has some kind of mentorship program. And, and so I went straight into there and then, but the thing is the whole time it's like the Holy Spirit was kind of telling me like, listen, like this isn't it. Like this isn't going to bring you this true happiness, this true joy, this true freedom, freedom that you're looking for. But I was really stubborn and I, I even said at one point, listen, I'm going to get rich or I'm going to die trying. Like, that's what I said to the Holy Spirit. It's like, you know, uh, just this like kind of like, you know, energetically kind of thing. And so, yeah, I kept going for it. And then Holy Spirit's like, okay, this guy's pretty stubborn right now. I'm going to have to reach him through <laughs> some different ways. <laughs> and one of the, there were so many amazing symbols like the holy spirit was really trying to reach me through all these ways one way which was pretty obvious was every night like so i was basically spending every minute of the day straight into this uh, false function of trying to become a millionaire and i noticed every night i had to end the night watching what well, david's videos for at least 20 30 minutes otherwise i'd like go insane basically so it was like some kind of crisis management that i was doing but you know, obviously that's not enough. And eventually you're just going to break down, which is what happened with me. Cause I would like my skill level and I shared this a while ago, but I was doing the business and the real estate and my skill level was going higher and higher. And it was like an opposite kind of thing. My skill level was going higher and my results were going like lower, you know? So it was like normally in the world, you get really good at something and then the results seemingly they both go up at the same time. But for me, it was like almost like the opposite. <laughs> I was like in the Washington DC area doing this real estate and you would think that my results would be really amazing, but I wasn't making any money, but my skills were so high. And 
yeah, it was almost like, it was like Holy Spirit showing me through like these drastic kind of things happening that, listen, this isn't your purpose. You're not following the direction for your life. This isn't even going to bring you to that happiness. And it was especially obvious when I would get like the deal of a lifetime. And then I would, I would be like, oh, this is going to make me $100,000, whatever. I was so excited. And then I make an appointment with the person. And then basically um, I would say, yeah, so I'm going to call you back um, like an hour before I leave the house just to make sure our appointment's still good. And then I would call them back and they wouldn't pick up. Or I would call them back and they would be like, oh, sorry, I just sold my house to someone else. Or I would actually show up there and they would be like, just these crazy circumstances that just made it really obvious. Like this one guy was about to go homeless in seven days unless he sold his house to, to make some money to live off of. And he wouldn't sell it to me. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> like he, he would rather go homeless than to, <laughs> than to sell the house to me. So it was like these more and more obvious symbols that the Holy Spirit was like trying to reach me. Was, Listen, no, this isn't what you want. I'm saving you for misery because if you start to seemingly get successful, then you're going to try to grow the money, grow, 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 and it's never going to go anywhere and you're just going to get really depressed. So I'm just going to save you a lot of time and pull these little deal of a lifetimes away from you right before you seem to get them just to make it obvious that this isn't what you want. And then I had these two mentors. Well, I had one main mentor, but then there was this other Kid, I'm going to call him a kid because he was, he was 24 years old. I was 22 at the time. He was in DC and he was making like millions of dollars a year. So I was really looking up to him and I was following his teachings and everything. And yes, yeah, so I think we're going to play this clip called Raphael very soon, Alexa, just to give you a heads up. But so his name, his name was Raphael and he was just an amazing symbol because he, um, he, I actually emailed him one day and he offered to meet up with me and he was like, what an amazing demonstration. Like I met up with him and one of the first questions he asked me is, okay, so why are you doing the business? See, he was asking a question of purpose and I said, well, you know, financial freedom, buy whatever I want, travel, you know, buy thing, buy a nice house for my parents, whatever, all these um, thoughts that I thought were reasonable ideas. But what he said was, that's not good enough. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And then the next thing he said is, do you believe in God? And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, in my mind, I was like, listen, listen, Holy Spirit, I came here to deny you. And I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make a lot of money right now. And here's this guy asking me about God. I came here to learn from him. You know, and then <laughs> he's telling me about God. So. <laughs> I pretended to like not really know the answer. I was like, yeah, 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 I guess I believe in God, you know, whatever. And then <laughs> like, you know, complete, like I was really fully into the course at this point. So this is like some massive denial that I was trying to hold in my mind. And so, yeah, he was just a beautiful demonstration. And um, even with the no private thoughts, no people pleasing, he, he demonstrated that so perfectly. Like we were sitting down. And yeah, it might seem a bit harsh, but it's like, it didn't feel harsh. Like I could feel the love underneath when he said these things. He was like, he was basically saying, um, yeah, listen, so you're, I had my hands in my pockets because I was feeling all this unworthiness around him. And he was like, listen, you're scared right now. Your hands are in your pockets. And then he was like pointing everything. I was like, yeah, you're not dressed like you should if you want to like, be a millionaire um and then so yeah so i had this fear and he's like um you still haven't showed me why it's worth my time to meet up with you like he was saying all these like no people pleasing at all no private thoughts but still there was this like love you know like he yeah like there was this love underneath it didn't feel harsh at all and so and then when i would listen to some of his, his podcasts and interviews when i was back home doing the business he would all of a sudden, like I'd be listening for like 10 minutes and then all of a sudden he would be like, yeah, like you really have to follow God's plan for your life. Like, and then, like all these things about guidance and, and purpose. And yeah, it was just really mind blowing how the Holy Spirit would reach me that way. And yeah, so we can play that a clip of one 
one of the talks where he just started talking about purpose, like, like I was watching the video and then 10 minutes later, he starts talking about this and I was like, okay, this is why I was watching the video. So, so yeah, you can play that clip now. Oh, and actually one more thing before you press play. <laughs> Link up with yeah, yeah, bring it back to the beginning. I just wanted to say, he's answering a question from the audience and the audience is asking him, um, or someone from the audience, it's a Facebook Live, he's asking him, how can I get on your level? So he's answering the question from the audience, how can I get on your level? And this is his response. How to get to your level? Link up with God, man. You don't need to get to my level. Maybe God has a level bigger than mine. Maybe God doesn't even have you in business. Maybe your, is, your purpose isn't even supposed to be in business making billions and millions of dollars. Okay? Link up with your purpose, man. Money won't make you happy. I got watches. I got cars. You know what I'm saying? Money doesn't make you happy. I'll tell you that much. It'll leave you unfulfilled. Purpose makes you happy. It's static, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I just thought that was just so amazing. Yeah, like that was like directly speaking to me, you know, like every detail. It's like maybe God doesn't even have you in business. Maybe that's not his plan for you. you know? And then the, the, the humility that I felt like, wow, this, he's so humble and the humility for him to say, maybe God has you on like a level higher than mine, you know, like it just, it just felt so beautiful, like everything he just said. And, and yeah, it's really, it's really about that purpose. Yeah. Oh, I love it, Andy. <laughs> that was, that was fun. Yeah. I just remember you telling me that kind of the first time and, and, you know, even while you're sharing it right here, I just kept hearing that quote from actually even a movie we watched last night here with David's commentary from WGE, which was other life. And he was just reminding like freedom of the body, or freedom of the mind for both you cannot have it's the question of purpose like and even and even the freedom of the body it's it's Jesus is just putting it in there to relate to us but even then there's no real freedom there either it's just all right thinking of freedom of the body or actually having freedom in the mind <laughs> those are your choices and yeah I think I, if I remember correctly we're we only got a couple minutes left but I think when you finally did s surrender this kind of desire to get rich or uh, I think it was right around the time you were uh, feeling to come to the silent retreat. If I remember correctly, it was right at that time you actually finally made like a big deal, like paid for your ticket and everything to come to the silent retreat. Do I remember that correctly? Yeah, I basically made the biggest deal so far, but, and it was just enough to pay off like everything that I needed to come to the silent retreat and have a little leftover. So yeah, it was really funny. It just worked out. Oh, it was like finally when you let it all go, it was like, okay, then you make the deal to help you get out. Spirit was just waiting. It's like, I'd, I'd love to make a deal for you, but you got to let this go. <laughs> it's like, I can't give it to you as long as you still want it. <laughs> And I've seen that happen a lot where it seems like until I let something go, it can't come in. But you can't even let it go for that purpose either. It's like, so you can't even like sneak your way around the spirit. It's like the spirit, it's like, I see what you're doing. <laughs> so I just think it's funny all the ways I've seen my mind try to play around in the spirit. Maybe he won't, like, maybe I can like, trick the spirit right now and like get what I want. <laughs> so... Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andy. That was so lovely to hear just your parables of that. Yeah, so thank clear. you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on our show today. We're, we're up for time, so uh, I guess our next show will be in three weeks, I think. July 22nd, if I remember correctly. Something like that. Something like that, yeah. And we might be together in person. We'll see what happens. I'm actually flying to Utah pretty soon. So, Yeah, very exciting. Looking forward to having you here. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. <laughs>